Welcome to webinar number three for 2020. My name is Luke Simmons. I hope you're really enjoying your lunch. Um, today we've got two topics for you that we're going to be covering off over the horizon, transform for success, and also customer delight from kickoff to siren. Those titles are going to mean more as we get into it. We've also got some other surprises along the way. So I hope you enjoy the session. So what is an webinar? An webinar is a mixture of two words that we made up, uh, Uber Eats and webinar. So the idea is that um, while you're enjoying your lunch, wherever you are at the workplace or at home or wherever, um, you can hopefully learn something from us. So yeah, let's hope you enjoyed this session. So my name is Luke Simmons. As I said, I look after the channel for connection. Um, I've been involved 15 years in technology. It's something I'm passionate about. I love helping businesses improve operations. Uh, we've also got Courtney Smith, who's going to be delivering the Over the Horizon presentation, uh, which is basically about all of the technology that you need to be looking out for in the future that's, that's really at our fingertips right now. So we may as well start thinking about it right now. And also Jonathan Patchell. Um, he's the kind of guy that you really want in your corner if you're looking to improve business process. So he's going to be talking about invoicing, using mobile technology and accounting, these sorts of things that can really add value at the back end. Um, and also, we've got a special guest today, Daniel Connell, who's a renowned comedian, very funny man, and uh, he's going to have some, some nice words to say about us, hopefully. <laughs> um, so the agenda, today we're going to look at um, an introduction to us as we've done. We've got Daniel Connell coming up, then we're going to do the, Courtney's presentation, Jonathan's presentation after that. We're going to finish up with some Q&A, and we've got a spin to win prize uh, that you guys can enter into, and then we're going to close out. Okay, so a little bit about us. So we've been around since 2006 and Kai was born in 2019 when we rebranded over from uh, Fleet Effect to Connection. Um, so the industries that we've really key to us are transport, we call it specialized services, uh, building services, manufacturing, um, agriculture, mining. And when, when we say any field based businesses, it's really anyone that you can see running around um, in, in a fluoro shirt, they're the kind of guys that we can help out with. So we've got over 10,000 users in Australia. Our smallest customers, two, and our largest customers, 15. So it's a bit of a mix in between. And what we're really passionate about is building one system for your business. So having everything connected together. So why are we here today? We're going to take some time out to talk with some, uh, I guess, similarly minded people like yourself. Um, we're going to learn something hopefully you didn't know prior, and we're going to provoke, put some ideas in your head, something that you hadn't thought of earlier. So hopefully we'll give you some new ways of going about business for you and for the companies that you deal with. And we also want to demonstrate how technology can really add some significant value to, to you and your teams. So without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Daniel Connell, who is going to say some very nice words about us. Let's see. Hey, g'day. Welcome, everybody, uh, to my kitchen. Welcome to the Connection Urban Arm. My name is Daniel Clow. I'm a stand up comedian. Yes, I'm in my kitchen uh, performing because it's lockdown and it's my favorite place to perform in the world right now. Um, I'm here because the crew from Connection asked me to come and add some humor to the Urban Arm today. Um, they said their first two Urban Arms didn't have much humor in them, so they said, can you come and do one and try and add a bit of humor? And I said, surely your first two had a bit of humor in them, like surely, and I watched both of them, and um, no, no, they were correct. There was no humor in those whatsoever. So here I am, uh, Daniel Connell. Uh, if you've never heard of me before, you're sitting there at home, uh, wherever you may be, in your kitchen maybe even, uh, you're sitting there thinking, Daniel Connell, never heard of him. What's he done? Has he done TV? Has he done radio? Has he emceed weddings? Uh, Yep, yep, I did radio in Canberra in 2009. Cheers, guys, thanks very much, appreciate that. I, uh, I did Canberra FM, which is Canberra's 11th highest rating radio station. Yeah, cheers, everybody, thanks very much. I did, uh, did that. I did a Friday night sports show with a mate in 2009, so thank you. Um, as this, after about four weeks of the show, we got word from the producer of the station, who was also the cleaner at the station, he said, um, hey guys, once you know that your show's going gangbusters, of course, we're gonna open the lines up to the public for the first time ever. Right, so four weeks in, we get a call, I had the honor of answering it. I picked the phone up and said, g'day mate, what sport would you like to talk about? And the voice went, 
you're a dickhead, then hung up. That was the one call we got in 18 weeks at that radio station. <laughs> that's 11 years ago. My dad still thinks that's the best prank he's ever played on me. So <laughs> pretty good one, dad. Um, no, so here we are. It's great to be here. Connection Ubina. Hope you've all got your Uber Eats delivered there at home. You're eating away. Normally stand-up comedy and people eating food doesn't really you know, work because you want people to make sound and laugh. But I'm recording this in my kitchen. I can't see you and I can't hear you. So stuff your face as far as I'm concerned. Hook in. Um, my delivery, I ordered my Uber Eats. Uh, it was coming and now the guy's just sitting in the street behind my street just sitting there uh, for some unknown reason. Bet you he's eating my chips, which is infuriating. Uh, I don't know if you know this, I saw this on the news, you may have seen it as well, that some Uber Eats delivery riders and drivers got caught eating people's food in alleyways on CCTV footage. They caught them having a little nibble on people's deliveries, um, which is annoying, very frustrating. Cheeky, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll agree. Like, if I've got chips delivered, like, I'll probably give you a few chippies if you ask for an Uber delivery person, but don't take my chippies without asking. It's, un it's unnecessary. So I've been at the pub with your friends, and, you know, you've got your plate of chips and your steak, and your friend just takes a chip without asking. Who do you think you are? Get your hands off my chippies. Like, unless you're a blood relative or, like, a life partner, don't touch my chips. Right? If I'm at a pub and I put a steak knife straight through the hand of a, a friend because they've taken a chip and the hand just like sticks to the table at the pub we're at, then we go to court, the judge should say, you know what, Daniel, you've done the right thing there. You're free to go. Um, she didn't. I got a 12-month good behaviour bond for that, but um, nevertheless, here we are. Um, okay, so I'll just quickly really check the... Still sitting there. It's quite frustrating, but I'm not going to let that frustrate me because I've got an Ubinar to do. Um, yeah, so we're here today for the Connection Ubinar. You all know what today's Ubinar entails, what topics we're going to cover, and you all know what Connection's all about. It's they're trying to get, you know, converting paper to glass and using one integrated system to run your business, basically, is what they're after. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Connection, I don't even know this, but they've got about 10,000 people using it already. Uh, that's a lot of people, 10,000. That's enough people to fill the MCG, I'll have you know. Uh, that's the MCG under current... COVID restrictions, of course, um, but nevertheless, pretty cool stuff. Um, still just sitting there. Let's eat my chippies, I won't. Let it get to me. Anyway, I, I, was, um, I was quite baffled, actually, when I was talking to the guys from Connection, that people still use paper-based systems to run their business. I couldn't believe that, it made me laugh. Like, what are you doing? You should be using a phone or tablet and using Connection. Like, it's, it's a no-brainer, in my opinion. You use your phone for most things. You probably might be watching this on your phone or tablet. You use your phone to check sports scores, to you know, order things online when you buy them. You use your phone you know, to order your Uber Eats. So why not use it to run your business? And all the benefits that come from that, I think it's just an absolute no-brainer, as I said. Like, there's so many good things that come from it. Like, think about the benefits. You can provide clients with real-time communication. That's pretty cool in my opinion. You can remotely manage employees, suppliers and subbies. That's also a cool thing. Uh, you can win more tenders, bids and contracts. I think that's pretty sweet as well. And most importantly, your workplace, aka car or you, will be much cleaner because it's not filthy with all your paper receipts hanging out everywhere. Oh, absolute common sense in my opinion. Um, and you might be sitting there at home thinking, Daniel Connell, he's a stand-up comedian in his kitchen. What does he know about how these businesses or, you know, how to run this sort of industry, this business in this industry, is what I'm trying to say. How does he know what he's talking about? Well, I'll have you know that I was actually an apprentice builder for my uncle 20 years ago, and I lasted three months, and he fired me because I didn't understand the business, and he said I'd never be able to work in the industry. But nevertheless, here I am, and I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so no-brainer. Get behind connection, okay? Let's quickly just check. Oh, he's on the move, finally. On the move, guys. Just coming up to my street now. He just turned it. He went straight past. Where are you going? Where are you going, mate? To what? Now he's just sitting there again. I'm not, I'm not gonna wrap this up on a bad note of this Never been able to eat my burger today and my chips, which are probably gone more than likely. Um, really don't want to end this thing on a weird note before I throw you back to Luke. Um, 
So what I might leave you with before I let you get back to the Uber now is just a nice way to spice your life up a bit. Uh, I'm not saying your lives aren't spiced up, you're having Uber Eats in your house, so you're pretty spicy lives, but give this a go. I've been doing this for the last two years or so, just to spice my life up a bit in day-to-day -day life, right? Say I'm like, it's gonna sound sus off the top, by the way, but give this a go if you're ever bored. It's gonna sound sus, all right? But sometimes I'll pretend I'm an undercover cop when I'm out on the street, all right? Hear me out, it's good fun, right? So say I'm like uh, at a train station or a bus stop and there's some young guys carrying them like dickheads, right? I'll make eye contact with the biggest kid in the group. I'll just slowly back away, keep the eye contact, and then just talk into the top of my shirt like that. Like I've got a bit of intel, a bit of inside information, undercover cop. It's good fun, give it a go. Same thing with kids at the supermarket, if they're mucking up with their parents, talking to your shirt, stare at them, they don't know what to do. It's good fun. Um, do be careful though, I got myself in a sticky situation there one night. I was outside a pub waiting for a friend and there was a security guard on a stool and he actually had a real microphone in his shirt. And I saw him talking to it and then he looked at me and I thought, I'll talk into my shirt as well, so he does. He didn't like it at all, he hated me instantly and he sort of shook his head. Then his security mate came over and they were having a chat, right? And they both looked back at me and I thought, my friend's about to come out of the pub any second, I'm gonna do it one more time for a good laugh, right? So I go again, the boss of the security, he's up out of his stool over to me in a flash, right? And just as he got to me, I thought my friend is coming out any millisecond out of that front door of that pub. Once they see I've got nothing there, it'll be a big laugh for everybody involved. So I go for a third go into the shirt, the security guard grabs my wrist like that, flicks me on the ground in two seconds flat, and he knows judo of some description. I'm now quickly on my back, surrounded by four huge guards. I thought, this has backfired massively. <laughs> I remember thinking, I'm going to be back up here. So I called again, right? And uh, <laughs> no one came. No, they actually beat me up pretty bad, those guys. But um, nevertheless, driver's still sitting there in the same position. <laughs> been a fun time guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, my name is daniel connell enjoy the rest of your ubernar today get around connection and i'll throw you back to luke good on you guys take it easy <laughs> all right i'm going to pass over to courtney now who's going to talk about over the horizon transform for success so over to you courtney thanks lukey appreciate the uh the introduction and of course to daniel um who put a little skit together for us um, we tried to bring some light through humour into the presentation today. Um, we hope that our presentations provide for um, an environment where you can get something for free, you can learn something, and hopefully we can bring some value to your day. Um, I'm, I'm Courtney Smith. Um, I, uh, I, I provide a um, strategic role in connection as the CEO and founder. And today's presentation I'm hoping to give to you is a presentation around what to look for over the horizon, what digital disruption is going to take place, and how you as a business can transform for success by looking for the early signs um, and adopting them um, in an intelligent manner. So um, most presentations I deliver uh, start with um, a video that's not me. And the reason why I do this is because I like to validate through substantive demonstrations that what I'm talking about is legitimate. And in this instance, uh, I've, I've, I've searched the internet for what I think is a great high production video that describes the movement and transformational times we're in. Um, I can say honestly that in 2020, uh, we are in a segment of time that is like no other that the planet's ever seen. Uh, compute is growing exponentially intelligence is growing exponentially in, in technology. And the reason why is because as compute increases, so does the ability to, to create ways to compute to be better. And so off to uh, Gerd Leonard, who is a futurist in, um, in Europe, I'm gonna remove my ugly mug um, from the presentation and I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in. You. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization 
mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation, well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business model. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Okay. Um, so I hope you gather a little bit from that, that the world we live in is moving fast. Um, where we will go now um, is determined by how we adopt the technologies and the changes and, 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 and deal with the changes that come forward. There's a great saying and uh, Peter Drucker, a management consultant, um, best described it to me. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And at Connection, I think we're trying to create the future for our clients and our partners. We see uh, what is coming and we try and make sure that we deliver in a package that is consumable. We like to be the advisor the, I'll call it the CTO for organisations that don't have the depth of understanding of technology. And we like to work closely in defining out what's your square box. It's very easy to try and pick things off the shelf and try and make them work within your business. But it's a whole different story when you've got a business that's successful to suddenly have technology thrown in that doesn't work within the systems and the operations in which you are, you um, deliver your, um, your, your day to day. Um, so uh, the things that allow you to do this is you don't want to get lost in being who you are. You, you want to you preserve that essence of your business, but you want to ensure that you take the value propositions that come up as they arrive in the future. Uh, prediction is a fuel's errand uh, and the future is essentially a opaque and unknown. But if you can get on the journey of understanding what's coming and adopt into your business models, you can be at the front not behind. So going out to marketplace, who's saying what, um, really at the end of the day, uh, and sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm in between, um, don't ever let perfect get in the way of being better. Um, the catalyst of disruption from McKinsey, KPMG, Deloitte are all fairly much the same. I've blended a couple here, but ultimately they drop into, into a few categories, between five and eight categories. I believe the categories today that you need to think about include edge, which is computing outside traditional environments like um, data centres uh, and having 
you know, external parties doing things for you that are outside your business. Um, IoT, the Internet of Things, that's a world where they're talking billions, 22 billion devices connected by 2025. AI, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning um, work hand in hand. We have a world where the computers got so vast that we can throw algorithms to look at data sets that are in the billions of lines. Um, what they can see is things that humans cannot see. And so when you blend all of these things, huge amounts of data, computing at the edge where decisions can be made in real time as opposed to waiting, um, this is an explosive area of the market. Bottom-up adoption, I'm a strong believer in bottom-up adoption. This is a concept where you need to empower the users at the ground. The ground knows a lot about technology. They're living, breathing it. Some people that are driving your trucks, that are working with your excavators, that are, that, that are site managing your business, um, delivering your jobs, whatever that may be, these are guys that are working, or girls, of course, um, that are working in a world that is technology-enabled now. They live and breathe technology. They know it. There's no excuses anymore, and they're often seeing things that you can't see. Hyper automation is where we have the ability to embed systems in our business that changes the way in which our business operates. We can automate through things like robotics, um, but ultimately it's about making sure you have a connection between the systems, your people, and your technology to ensure you get the best outcomes in your business. Distributed cloud links closely to edge that's where we have multiple locations of data storage. That's only extending with things like software as a service and, and certainly where we're starting to see um, edge devices being uh, able to also compute and store. Bandwidth everywhere, 5G being pushed by Telstra, um, by, by everyone, blocked by others. Um, at the end of the day, it's the experience that matters. And when you deliver experience and you deliver it quickly, um, through through mechanisms that allow you to do it anywhere and everywhere, you will start to change the way in which you engage. And and uh, that bleeds into multi-experience. And multi-experience is really simple. I've got a watch I can engage with, which which takes um, a, a, you know, a measure of my heart, which links to a fitness application, which links to my doctor. Um, obviously, I can use the watch to do a, a, um, a man down scenario. I can use a VR headset to train. It's this concept that humans are starting to look to lots of different places to find their, their engagement. So on to the big ticket items, the ones I think we can talk to today. I was going to talk to two, and the first one is edge IoT, AI, and machine learning. Um, what I want to make sure and, and clear here is, per the presentation earlier, is that there is always a requirement for the human. There is creativity and things of the conscious mind that a, that a computer can't deliver. And so we need to be clear that we're not trying to displace or, or, or replace, we are trying to harmonise with. And so we need to think about how we can add automation and processes in our business to create what we call the intelligent digital twin. And the intelligent digital twin is literally what can a human do in their best form and what can the computer do in their best form and let's marry those together so when they're doing their job they are the perfect form um, intelligent bpms so that's business process management systems um, we would like to classify our business as one of those technologies that enables intelligent bpms ai and machine learning we're playing with that at the moment in areas of bots and 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 feedback loops to clients and certainly in reporting layers because we trap a lot of data in this hugely connected world where we have so much choice um, and the challenge with choice is what do you sift through to get your outcomes um, statements that you know that 50 percent of all enterprise data will be outside of the enterprise um, are a crazy statement to consider if you're a business that's worried about the way in which you operate today so we're going to talk quickly and I'm going to take you through a journey of one of the little projects we're undertaking at the moment, which I'm leading, and that is the ability to, at edge, create a technology that adds value to the business. Telematics is where we came from, GPS tracking, as you would know, but ultimately, right here, right now, we're playing with technology that can compute unbelievable amounts of visual data on the fly inside your vehicle and provide you insights that are intelligent and articulated because the AI engines that run on these cameras can determine things your eyes can't see and often will determine things that are needed back in, in the base to improve things like training, accident investigation, near misses, etc. 
they blended with ADAS, Advanced Driver Assist, which is seen the highest quality vehicles now, and DMS, Driver Monitoring Systems, enabling you to understand fatigue and distraction and things like that in the vehicle. Here's an example which I put together of myself. Um, this is a very simple example, and I'd like you to um, have a quick look. So in this example here, we have a, uh, a drive um, undertaken by myself. Um, there's a construction zone, and it's a 40 zone. And in this instance, the camera has picked up it's a 40 zone and registered with GPS that I'm actually traveling outside the speed limit. So in this example here, it's a very, very simple example, but it shows the power. You get to visualize what happened in the environment, you get to know why it happened, and then you get to assess on how you react to what happened. You can't do that with existing GPS and tracking systems, and you can't do that with static cameras. To take that a little bit further, uh, we allow now the ability to look at a whole trip what I love about this example is that humans can absorb a trip in absolute detail in what we call rapid frames. And in this instance, I've asked for that trip to be downloaded in a fast eight second clip, and that's taken all of that information and pulled it into a compressed view. Very, very good for reviewing if there was incidents or issues leading up to an accident or something that was done out in the field that you need to investigate. After talking about that little disruptive piece of technology, and that's coming in our in our suite into the new year, um, I like to uh, talk about bottom-up adoption. This is really, really close to my home because of the way in which we've built our business off this approach. Um, the, the key to bottom-up adoption is that you need to consider now that the end user, the person in the seat, knows as much about technology and perhaps even more about technology than, than the management teams driving those outcomes in the seat. So what we're saying here is we need to think about the flip of the pyramid. Hierarchical from bottom workers to top management, we need to think about allowing the bottom to be in the decision-making process and assisting. To do that, we need to think about how we guide, not control outcomes in our businesses. And, and I love this little statement on the left down here that bottom-up ideas may take time to form, storm, norm, and eventually perform because they have extreme buy-in and ownership at the level you want, at the level where the work is actually done. So make sure you provide tools for learning and collaboration. Ensure that you guide and don't control and start lean and iterate. Not every idea will be good, but the ones that do come up, those gems of, 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 of or diamonds, so to speak, they're the ones that will make a change in your business that works for your business. It's important you understand that you empower and that through that cycle with the right technology, and I'd like to think the connection through, through Kim and intelligent cameras and GPS and all the things that we offer our customers, particularly the fact that we can drive the data to the decision maker, whether that be in our application or third party applications, allows um, for things to happen at the ground that would never happen in paper or systems that are disaggregated or don't work together. Again, I would like to reinforce that we endorse by management, we accelerate and empower the users. I've implemented a little thing called the Champions Project to empower our teams to deliver results for my business. I like to think that in our business, we eat the dog food and drink the champagne like we expect our customers to. Um, I'd like to thank you uh, all for um, listening to me today. Um, it's a whirlwind and it's a lot to consume, but ultimately, um, don't forget that technology shouldn't be something you're afraid of. With the right influences and the right people in your world, it should be something that you can engage with that will add huge value to your business. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the presentation. I'll hand back to Luke now. And whatever you do, don't let perfect get in the way of being better. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Cordy. Uh, that was a great presentation. And I guess I'm um, thankful that uh, humans will be required when uh, all of this comes into, uh, into play. So now we're going to kick over to Jonathan, who's going to deliver a presentation on customer delight from kickoff to siren. And um, hopefully you guys get some more ideas out of this. So over to you, Jonathan. Thanks, Luke, for the introduction. Yes, I'm Jonathan Patchell. I'm sales and marketing manager for Connection. And today I'm going to take you through um, sales and invoicing and the uh, job management systems 
basically what you need to delight your customers from kickoff to siren. So today, what we're all about is winning and keeping clients. Uh, that's one of the major things that Connection does and we're here to help you keep your clients and delight your clients as well. So that's including plan with actual data instead of forecasted data as well. So that is including real-time data that's coming from the field, a mobile device obviously, coming back real-time into our systems, which allows us to then process that and help you further forecast for the coming day or even for that day. Price and profit, working out directly what's the cost of our goods and how much we're selling them for. So you've got real-time information of profit and loss per job, per day, even per employee if you want, broken down by, by timesheet. It's completely up to you. If, Like I say to all our clients, if we're capturing the data, we can report on the data. We also want to negotiate from experience as well. So that's keeping all the history in the systems so you can always go back to your past history and allowing that information to flow so it's really easy for everybody in your organization to have the past at the present. Automation is king as far as we're concerned as well when it comes to systems. If we can automate it, we, we will. Um, that, you know, that even from our support desk and everything else, if we can automate it, we always try to. Uh, and we want to bring that to our customers in what they're using. And if we can automate the delivery of, of the systems that we're creating or even the outcomes, what you are looking for as a business, more than happy to do that with our digital systems and algorithms with inside our software to do that for you. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is do a nice step and repeat um, integrated management system linking to a really strong financial package like MYB Advanced and, and also your back end office package as well, which could be G Suite or it could be Office 365. We're trying to give you business in your pocket, basically, and obviously feeding that back to your web browser. But if you can run your business from your pocket, then you're winning. So we're all about designing your integrated experiences as well. So that is linking all the systems of your businesses back into the one system and continually improving and learning for improvement as well. So you've got your quality HSE, there and you've also got your accounting your planning procurement human human resources we are basically pulling back the curtains a little bit and showing you how we do things um, with our systems and we've got all our systems talking to each other that is we can help you do that as well so we've got our office packages talking back to our kim and then our accounting system and even our telephone system which is a voip 3cx system uh, allows us to know who's calling in how many times they've called and everything else. So every, all the data is coming back into the one system and then we're able to report on that for our KPIs and also key customers and any reports that we really need is able to come out of the system. We've got the old chestnut here. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Obviously written by Benjamin Franklin. Um, this is all about disruption and making sure that you are ready as a business to take on the next steps of growth and what's coming around the corner. Obviously with these crazy times in COVID, uh, if you had your system set up like a lot of our customers did and ourselves, there was no real problem working remote as long as your customers weren't affected as much. Um, and during these times we've really helped our customers be prepared and they've actually, a lot of them have succeeded over these really troubled times as well. And uh, the systems that we put in place allow you to be have well, scalability for your business as well. And if you want to, you can even become international eventually. For example, uh, over this period of time, we've diverted a lot of our attention as a business to uh, more overseas markets, especially New Zealand. and more remote locations for us as well, like Western Australia. and Got some great wins on the board doing that. So plan your success with data. 
like I said before, if we can trap the data, we can report on it. So systems are set up that makes selling easier. So it's very easy for me to track KPIs of salespeople um, and also CSMs and the internal operations of the business. I can see everything coming in, where everything is forecasted and where things have a lull. We love to provide live catalogs as well. So a catalog will be for us a product and inventory program in there as well. So you can track all the live catalogs and update them as required. We've got the custom rates that come in, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, and define time and materials as well. So that all brings us back to having accurate estimation. So, for example, with our CRM catalogs here that you can see in a screen grab I've got of our database, um, they are really detailed in what we have. We can see what, what we move the most of and what we have in stock and what we don't. And the CRM also linked to all your customers, basically all into the one area so we can define who's, who's where and what they need. The product catalogs can be obviously customized to your requirements. We, we've written um, separate warehousing information as well around the catalogs. So you can actually even have a warehouse in a van if required. Some of our customers have very unique requirements and some of those might be rate cards as well. So rate cards are a material linked to a particular client sometimes. They can also be linked to a particular machinery as well. Uh, and even a geolocation. So when we're talking about automating systems, you can predefine how much an excavator is worth or even a, a pump of some sort or a generator. And with that particular customer, over a particular time, the rate card can automatically look that up and provide you with the correct details. Once again, automating your sales process. Price for profit, technology is a winner formula, as we all know, um, because time and materials just happens. It just flows, as we like to say. Uh, quotes are made very easily out of the base information we're grabbing in the CRM of the system. And we give you that one touch templated repeat if you like. Estimating your way with spreadsheets to the system and automating the workflow is a big one from connection and systems like Kim. We love to feed all that information back into the accounting package, but automating the workflow of the sales inquiry for the, through the lead time that the sales has taken to the quote to the closure of the quote is all trapped. So you've got all those metrics to measure your performance on as a business. So we've got quality estimating here that allows us to actually put all the detailed requirements into another system before it actually pushes out to a quote. Um, for example, as a team, we actually go over the internal requirements of the customer and being a very bespoke business, we are able to then break that down to a line level and then do our best estimate based on the time. And then that allows us to then punch the quote out the back of that information. Uh, it makes sure that everybody's held accountable through the whole process. And as everything's automated, the predefined and customized requirements of the quotes are then pushed into tasks and schedules. So at the back of that PDD that we have there, um, we some of our clients, we call it other words, uh, a pre-quoting a, a pre template, um, or in our industry, we call it the PDD. That allows us to then have a very detailed quote that's punched out in a normal readable format. We're still working on this, like always, um, continuous improvement, and even photos can be added to the quote now too, allowing really 
enriched information for the client to understand exactly what you're, you're, you're quoting on and we're quoting on and what's going to be delivered. So we're all about delivering for success and managing every challenge in, in one screen, trying to have connected divide, uh, or connected worlds across accounting and, and scheduling. We like to do everything in the way of click and drag world, uh, scheduling, and then scheduling can be linked to your training records, for example, reverse lookups to making sure that you're getting the right people out there on site. You've got your projects linked to that also with your job completions once the job's been scheduled, all of your purchase orders can be put into there, um, all the materials are put into there, and you're actually capturing the time of the job in real time back to Kim, which allows you to then feed that back into your accounting system once you've approved that system, or once you've approved that uh, the job and it's been signed off on. We've done immense amount of job schedulers, which we'll jump into next. So as you can see here in this video, it's just loading there for a sec, um, there's done many ways of job scheduling. We've never come across a company that does scheduling the same way. Uh, so that was just a few little demos there of what we can actually do in the way of job scheduling. So you can see in this one here, a lot of it's about crews. Um, this one here is materials and, and people. Um, that is machinery and people as well and then obviously just then people is coming down. There's no real one answer to your company's job scheduling. It's a mixed bag, everybody has a different way of doing things and trying to find a solution out of the box usually just doesn't work. So you need to use someone like us to actually break down your requirements and your schedules and link that in to the one system. So managing milestones is, is huge as well, uh, this is a Another example of what we're actually doing with our, with our milestones linked to um, particular people and wh where they're actually, time and materials are actually logged in real time, like a, you can see here in, in, in a Kanban sort of system. Um, great customized dashboard that allows you to actually see exactly what's in progress and what's done and what's not done, giving you really clear information that you need. We can also customize these looks and, and feels as well. Other people like to have more of a Gantt chart look. Um, it's really up to your requirements. So job completion in here, as you can see, new features that we can um, now have uh, is that we've obviously got main tasks and we've also got subtasks linked to main tasks. We can have as multiple subtasks under the main task. We can even integrate this back to like greater packages like MYB Advanced, which allows us to have it on, really on the one system. But most of the time what we find is we're the operational frame when it comes to your project management and your job scheduling and all that information then fed back into the system. Having the main tasks and subtasks also allows us to really break that down into a more granular level and gives our clients and our customers really good information when it when required. So once you have all this information, you want to be able to invoice with speed and the system does the work for you. It automates in a way that's unique to your business. We're all about having bottoms up control. So feeding from the field back up to the top of the business, managing hold points where required. So you might have hold points of um, sign off and things like that. The, we do that all electronically. Approvals from anywhere as well, so third parties can approve and even internal managers. It stops all the arguments later on in billing. Um, it allows you to see your profit in real time and magically lands right in your financial, financial package using usually APIs um, and CSV files. So as we wanna automate invoicing, that allows the system to automatically generate after approval um, that can then be sent directly to the financial package you can send it out of your third-party financial package or you can even send the invoicing out of connection 
We obviously have customized outputs so your invoices can look and feel like they do now or you can use our standardized templates as required. We're just gonna jump into some questions now. Um, currently, uh, no one's really done anything in much detail there. There was a couple coming through. So if you really have a question at the back of this and you'd like that answered now, please um, start typing in the question box um, and we can answer that. But um, I do have online Courtney Smith. Are you, are you there, Courtney? Uh, yep, can you hear me? Yep, yep. hear you loud and clear. Um, one of the questions that just came through uh, was, uh, what did Daniel mean by when he said paper to glass? Do you want to take that one, Courtney? Yeah, happy to. Um, yeah, so in, in our world, we tried to create a catch catch cry that um, really illustrated what we try and do. And the practical reality is that our world is still paper bound. So we like to think that jumping from paper to glass, uh, glass being a mobile screen, um, is the only way to go. Does that answer it for you, mate? Yeah, I think that's great. So, um, another question that came in was, uh, who was the futurist in Courtney's presentation? Um, the, the the futurist was uh, Jared Leonard. Leonard. Um, you, you can find. Good, good, it's good. Good Leonard, oh, mate. Um, good Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Thank you there. Um, yep, so you know all about him. So uh, yeah, Courtney will put that in the links as well uh, when if you want to download this presentation as well, we'll have more information in there. And uh, yeah, another question that was came in here, are you planning on doing another over the horizon session, Courtney? Oh, well, okay, that's nice that someone actually uh, may potentially liked my content. Um, look, uh, I, I think, um, and well, frankly, I enjoy um, doing the research and undertaking um, some of the groundwork that people might not have time in their day to do. So we've we've decided and have to get votes on that um, to continue to provide this snippet of over the horizon, a little bit of futuristic uh, technology and digital displacement uh the content will follow the the boundaries of what i put forward in that early slide so um, there's a couple more webinars with a couple more pieces um so the answer is absolutely if the uh if the market demand is there excellent um this one's come over from the wild west uh can ai cameras detect seat belts and mobile phone use and and, uh, and how expensive are they courtney Okay. Um, look, the, the the technology today uh, is is not as mature as we probably um, would hope. But um, after you know, we're in we're in six months of analysis now, um, so we're not going to jump on this one early. They can detect things like distraction on mobile phone. Seat belts are a bit trickier. The, the sort of the generation of AI we talk about, where the camera sees like a human needs to see pointers and so eyes down is a pointer a seat belt not being worn it is it's suggested that we might need to put a sash on the seat belt to validate whether it's over the human or not and so the, the camera can be trained through multiple instances to view that sash um expensive i don't think so uh you know we, we've been selling cameras in in sort of the thousand dollar range installed for um, a few years now um, they're, they're high-end cameras they do a lot of things multi multiple camera viewpoints to uh, driver um, side view etc but the new generation of cameras are going to change the way in which um, we can price um, at the low end uh, we'll find ai cameras that can connect back to our kim app and and kim will do the um transactional ai and at the high end we'll be able to integrate to transport management systems can bus units, real-time Odo, real-time fuel, those sorts of things. Um, and they will be priced in and around um, $1,000 uh, as well. So the market's moving rapidly. The technology is 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 really moving quickly. And I'd say by the new year, our, um, our suite of cameras will be uh, the best in, in class. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, more the AI camera technology and linking that back to the one system approach. Um, 
So there was a, a lot of elements in the second presentation. Can some of these be customized to our business workflows? Um, well, I can take this one. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, our, our system is highly flexible, as I kept on saying through my presentation. And it's uh, basically we, we have that on what we call the low code framework. So essentially, yes, initially you'll need us to do a lot of coding for you. But if, like, for example, if you need us to uh, customize a form or something like that, or you might have a new swims or you might have a new uh, sales process that you want to implement, you've got the power to actually do that internally yourself. So there's no problem with us using us as a bit of a sounding board and we've got a customer success manager at the moment, uh, Mark, who, who'd be more than help, happy to help you with that or even myself. But um, yeah, the idea would be is that you are the master of your own domain. Um, this helps enables unique client workflows um, and it can be built very quickly compared to most other systems out there. Um, it looks like I've got uh, one final one here. Uh, what accounting packages do you integrate into? Well, we um, definitely integrate into uh, Reckon. It's a, that's, a, that's a major one that we uh, are growing with at the, at the moment. Uh, another great one is uh, MYOB Suite. We do account right. We also integrate into Advanced. You can find all this information on our website, of course. Um, and some of the other ones that left the field a bit that we integrate into as well that people really don't know about is is uh, is Vista as, as well. Um, that's that's more of a, on the side of a construction uh, companies. Um, and the other side that we also go into, which is getting a lot more lift, is uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Um, so yeah, we always believe in um, integrating to many suites. I think that uh, it's very positive for the whole market to to be across all the different accounting packages. And obviously, the, each accounting, accounting package is, has got its own specific unique selling position as well. So it's important for connection to be across to that. Um, so I think that's 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 all the questions that are coming in at the moment. So if you have any more, you know how to reach out to us. Um, okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks for attending. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye.